prisoners are finding themselves um, locked away for up to 23 hours a day inside cells. You know, we would normally expect prisoners to uh, be spending somewhere in the region of 10, 10 hours outside of cell, engaged in um, activities, education, training, work. So it's been well documented in recent months that prison conditions um, have not been as good as they should have been. Uh, we've seen a marked deterioration uh, in conditions as described in official inspection reports uh, from prisons across the country. A lot of attention has been paid to uh, a rise in the number of prisoners taking their own lives in prison, a rise in self-harm incidents and that's understandable. We've seen um, some attention paid to a, a rise in violent incidents and uh, uh, a rise in the number of bullying incidents reported in prisons. Um, this isn't surprising, but slightly less attention has been paid to the amount of time that's being spent uh, outside of cells by prisoners right now. Um, you know, we would normally expect prisoners to uh, be spending somewhere in the region of 10, 10 hours outside of cell, engaged in um, activities, education, training, work. Uh, but what we are seeing, in, in certainly in some prisons, uh, resp reports have come back of, of prisoners um, spending as little as one hour in, in, in a 24-hour period outside of their cell and in that time they have to make phone calls, they have to um, collect their meals, they have to uh, get, get showered and, and, uh, and so prisoners are finding themselves um, locked away for up to 23 hours a day inside cells, unable to access employment, training or education. It's, it's certainly fair to say that some prisons appear to be more able to provide um, time out of cell than, than others. Um, as a general rule of thumb, it's going to be happening in the prisons where there are fewer officers than there need to be uh, and where there are more prisoners uh, th than there really ought to be because what happens if there's limited space in, in, uh, in, in courses, then some prisoners will miss out, of course. If there aren't enough officers to escort prisoners um, across the landing, down to the classrooms and the workshops, then those prisons will remain where they were in their cells. And so, um, where we see uh, this problem, particularly are in the prisons where there's um, you know big overcrowding problems uh, and uh, you know sharp reductions in the number of staff. What we've seen is um, over the last four or five years, the Ministry of Justice has had to make uh, significant cuts. The National Offender Management Service. Um, is a, a body within the Ministry of Justice which is responsible for uh, overseeing the prison service and they've had to make really big savings. Now where they've decided to make savings um, in the prison system is by reducing the number of staff across the piece and so we've seen um, you know prisons having to deal with reductions in officer numbers in, to the tune of about 40 percent over the course of four years. What that means is that there are fewer officers on the landings, on the wings, to, to, to supervise prisoners. And uh, this has come at a time when the number of prisoners in the system has, has gone up. And so what we're seeing is we're seeing uh, fewer officers per prisoner and, and, and we're seeing a greater demand on officers' time. Now, when there aren't enough officers to uh, look after everyone outside the cell, what happens is that they stay in their cells and, and so prisoners have less time out of cell to, to access the... Uh, uh, the activities that we might expect them to be undertaking. Um, this is a big problem because um, we put people in prison for a variety of reasons, but one of the reasons is for rehabilitation purposes. Um, if prisoners aren't engaged in education, employment, training, they aren't getting the skills they need to better prepare them for life on the outside. And um, all the evidence points to prisoners who are unable to get employment when they're released from prison. Um, are, more, are much more likely to uh, return to a life of crime than those who can get into jobs, get into education uh, and start to turn their lives around. Well, you could employ more officers, which is something that the government has um, taken on board that it needs to do. Um, fundamentally, though, I think it's time to have a serious grown-up discussion about uh, who we send to prison and for how long. Prisoner numbers are uh, increasing all the time. We've seen the prison population in England and Wales double in the last 25 years and what that means is that um, you know, three quarters of our men's prisons are overcrowded. They're holding more prisons than they're designed to. This leads to really bad outcomes for everyone. And so one way of ensuring that prisoners can spend more time out of cell 
is to reduce the number of prisoners in the first place so that those who are there um, you know, are able to access better activities. That If we spend less money on locking people up, we therefore have more money free to work more appropriately with the people we do lock up. And um, so we need to give serious consideration to the large uh, number of prisoners in this country who could be better dealt with by way of community punishment.